Look, life's already hard enough. Why do you want to make NHL even harder? If you're guilty of banging that start game button immediately, or randomly switching through strats throughout the contest, then you're welcome. Because this is Fat Strats, and I'm No Sleeves 12. <laughs> Before you even start a game or look online for those glitch goals, you need to understand what your team is trying to do. In NHL, people seem to think they control the whole team, which is wrong because you only control one player at a time and the computer handles the rest. To be better, the easiest method to improve is to be set up correctly to succeed. Now what I'm going to recommend is not for the super elite. If you're amazing at the game, keep doing what you're doing, but if you're lost and can't seem to win consistently anymore, it's probably time for a change. This method is going to make it easier to score and defend. That being said, let's get to it. Before you set the strats, worry first about your team makeup. In NHL 17, it's almost a handicap to have a player play the correct wing. What I mean by that is a right-handed player should be played on the left wing and vice versa. The centerman doesn't really matter, just make sure your left-handed guys are on the right wings and your right-handed guys are on the left wings. I'll explain why in a little bit. Also make sure you check to see that any injured guys are put into the lineup if they are scratched. NHL 17 mimics real rosters, so if they're hurt in real life, chances are they're scratched in NHL 17. I'm a diehard Sharks fan, but they also have probably one of the best setups this year. Let me show you the setup I do before every game. It's annoying sometimes, but that's the cost of being bomb as fuck. As a side note, if you have a few wingers around the same rating, Take the faster player, as they can allow you to do more damage on the rush. As for the other lineup options, don't really worry about special teams. Just make sure your wingers are opposite-handed as much as possible. Let's start with the 4-check, the 2-3. The 2-3 is very simple. It explains when you don't have the puck, two players down low are going to be attacking the opposing player, with three players up high waiting for your guys to get the puck back, or there to defend should you not retrieve it. The only other option here really is the 1-2-2 aggressive, which is what I use for years. The difference is you only have one guy in a deep attacking the puck directly, with two behind for support and two behind at the blue line. And I really want to get across how effective having more players at all-out aggressiveness really is. Plus the 2-3 has three players back, so pretty much eliminates the breakaway against. Here's a quick clip of it in action. Now again, I'm one of the two. So you have your AI, your other AI, attacking the puck here, and you kind of cutting off the lane, and uh, yeah, it ends up working out well. Next up is the neutral zone. You want to pick the 1-2-2 blue. This is going to determine how your team sets up in the neutral zone. This only applies when you do not have the puck and are in the neutral zone. The 1-2-2 blue will have one player directly attacking the puck, while the middle two attack the opposing blue line on the breakout for the opposing team, leaving two back around the red line in case of breakaways. While this is the riskiest setup in terms of pressure, it is also the most effective at knocking players off the puck. The setup I'm trying to teach you is based on continually hammering your opponent when they have the puck and to take away their time and space. The 1-2-2 red is the same setup, except the middle two attack on the red line as opposed to the opponent's blue line. The 1-4 and 1-3-1 are probably what you use now. While they're great at defending your own blue line, they both have big flaws, which I'm going to show you how to exploit in the How to Score video of the series. Now we're on to offensive zone bias. This determines essentially how hungry your AI is on the puck when you dump it in, or when you don't have the puck in the offensive zone. When you control the puck, your line strat takes over. It all depends on the game. If you're winning trying to hold out, you can change it to the neutral zone trap. But no matter the situation, I really enjoy the full four check in all situations. And I'll explain why again in a little while. If you set to neutral zone trap and the puck is dumped in, your guys won't pursue. And they will all just set up in the neutral zone to protect against the opponent's rush. With full pressure, your guys will fly in and attack the opponent non-stop trying to get the puck back. For offensive pressure, this is going to seem a bit weird, but I prefer to start the game with a conservative offensive pressure. Make sure that the players don't get caught cheating, as all of my other strats are set to a more risky option. This is essentially an overall setting for what your players are thinking in the offensive zone. I prefer to have them a bit more conservative to make sure breakaways don't happen early due to my defensemen and forwards all selling out to score a goal. 
For defensive pressure, you want to choose puck side attack or high pressure. Again, it's all about being very aggressive. Puck side attack and high pressure will attempt to take away the time and space of the opponent in your defensive zone. Now the way I play in the D zone is a bit different than most, but using the high attack D pressures is key as any good player will feast on you with point shots if you use the passive or protect net strats. Again, I'll show you a different way to defend and how to play defense video of the series. For the defensive strategy, always start with staggered. You're going to see a different way to play defense in the defensive zone. Um, the collapsing is super popular, but again, it will give players way too much time and space. Stagger will give you a mix of coverage with one player up high looking to intercept the point, the point pass. Has enough coverage where the slot will be clogged and again, has some point coverage. Collapsing is just that, collapsing into your net. In NHL 17, point shots are the hardest to defend as it takes no skill for the puck to hit an AI stick and end up in the net. Now, if they start abusing the point as their only way to score, change to tight point as that will have the wingers attack the defenseman. Next up is the offensive line strats. You want to choose overload. This is the only option. I want you guys to choose this for every line you play with. I went years without even changing these from the default each team was set to, and now I realize how extremely important and insanely effective this strat is once you know how to use it. Now the description of overload tells you essentially nothing. Overload is meant to give you strong passing support down low and along the boards while you wait for the slot to open up for the one-timer. If you bring the puck down to the left side of the screen, all the way to the goal line, it gives you an option to pass back to the half boards. Once you're pressured there, you can go back to the point or to the goal line. This will take practice. Basically, you'll have very little time to make a pass and read the play, but your goal is to pass the puck between the three players on the side you're on until one of two things happen. First is, your opponent selects the D-man and tries to attack you. Once you see this, you know he's fucked up. The lane in the slot is now much more open. This is the main reason as to why you need your wingers using the opposite hand, because the player in the slot will be ready for a piss missile as he shoots the correct way for a one-timer when using overload. The second option is if you run out of space due to someone set to high pressure and they're attacking you, the other defenseman should be wide open at the other end of the ice. Again, you'll be able to see more in my how to score video, but this is a little bit of an example. That pretty much wraps up the Fat Strats video. If you guys want to play some time, hit me up on Twitter at NoSleevesGaming or on Twitch at twitch.tv slash NoSleeves12. Thanks for watching, guys. Stay average. Your mama's home, we can bring it.